I'm Fabian from the Battle for Westnord project. Let me fetch my notes. I haven't prepared any slides and not much text because I want to lure you into a discussion about ethical questions of game development. I've been asked to introduce the audience to the Westnord project because um, there are people in here who haven't heard about Westnord. Who is it? A lot! <laughs> okay, Westnord is a turn-based strategy game with hex fields, very old school, with um, hand-drawn pixel images. Uh, maybe you know Fantasy General or Battle Isle from Blue Byte, which is not exactly fantasy themed, but very similar. Yeah? Anything else? Nils, willst du noch was anderes sagen? Heroes of Might and Magic? Ah, mm -hmm. yeah, Might and Magic. Sorry, Sorry, we are full. Uh, is there any other uh, place? I mean, is there a position? Here. Excuse me. <laughs> was ist los? What's up? Um, the room is full. Ah, okay. You know? Capacity that's, limit reached. Yeah, that no was a, that's what I was asking. It is. Ah, that's ah. what the sign says. <laughs> <laughs> like, full. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> the motivation for the discussion was I was working on a total conversion of another game into the Westnode engine. And after converting some of their buildings, I stumbled upon one called Nuclear Power Plant, which I found very exciting because, yeah, that's not a building I would like to have on my battlefield if I were a soldier. I, I wouldn't like to be on a battlefield at all. <laughs> okay, when I looked into the file to convert it, it contained nothing. Uh, expect, yeah, this building is producing some energy and it's consuming some material, it's not uh, producing <coughs> any waste, nor um, is there any... Sorry, we are Sorry, full. full. Oh, seriously? Seriously? <laughs> seriously. <laughs> okay, it's not um, producing any waste, and um, destroying the building causes no further action in the game. <coughs> that kind of made me think if we as game developers should introduce game mechanics which are so far away from real life that they might hurt people's expectations and influence politics. I don't know. Uh, I guess you are many de game developers here, and most games feature warlike actions. Is that true? No? What, what are your games about? Anything, um, you know, can be like with cars, with strategy, with anything. And have you ethical restrictions or rules in your projects? But it's an interesting question because, for example, a long time ago there was a, a game in Flash uh, about McDonald's and, and it was quite addictive. And I thought about the question about myself because the game was developed to criticize uh, McDonald's and all the industry of the fast food. So the game in the beginning it was really addictive, it was try, trying to uh, to move uh, the strategy along all the marketing, you have all the departments, you have the food uh, chain, and etc. And of course, you can put additives on the on the meat. You can do really nasty things uh, in, in additives general. that make addictive. The, the game was really, really well executed and Sorry? developed. And uh, what happened is, in the beginning, I tried to do the, the good things. It was impossible. So you you lose it in, immediately. So. The next time I said, okay, I'm going to be really a badass. So I'm, I started adding additives, uh, cheating people, firing employees, uh, doing really bad things. 
And what happens is my curve of, uh, of earnings was like woof, really, really up. And, and so I said, well, right, right now I'm a millionaire, so I'm going to try to do the right, the right things. So I'm going to try to hire people to, to remove the additives of the food, etc., etc. And what happened, in fact, is my curve was Dropping. getting down back again. So I discovered that the game was developed just to criticize uh, the, the McDonald's, but it was like kind of sad because it was the message that the game was sending to you is the only way to do good for you and earning money was doing bad things in the world. And I, I was really a little bit disappointed about, you know, about the, the message because every mm -hmm. game is, has a message, a cultural message in a, when you play, you receive something, and if if you receive a, such a negative message, you, you, you get pissed off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. And this discussion isn't anything new to games, specifically it's the same with any media. Yeah, uh, indeed. What kind of messages do you want to convey and so on? What's specific to games, though, is that they are simulations about system, system simulations, basically. Every game simulates some kind of a system. and. Uh, I think the main ethical question is whether whether it's okay to present a simulation without telling that this does not represent reality. For example, even even disguising it as if, as if it would represent reality. For example, uh, Sims is a good example. It kind of tries to okay, it has a very playful attitude, but it kind of tries uh, to simulate pardon. the Sims. The Sims, from Sims. yeah, mm -hmm. the Sims. So it kind of tries to simulate reality, uh, and it kind of conveys this that this is this is like the real life though it is a playful mode yes but anyway the message is that it conveys is uh, that you get when you get money you get to buy things and so on so you get to develop your character by getting money and and navigating the social networks and so on but the point is that it never it never says explicitly that this is our version of reality and this might not actually be a reality is it understandable that people understand this without explicitly telling them. Mm, yeah, uh, I, well, I thought, aren't most people knowing, okay, so this is a game, but is it true for children? I witnessed um, a boy and a girl playing at a Spielplatz, what is it called? Playground. A playground? <laughs> and the boy jumped upon the girl and hurt it a little and um, when he was interviewed about that, he told, ah, yeah, I was expecting her to turn into a banana or some other fruit. <laughs> I, it took me some time to realize that this concept is from Super Mario, <laughs> which sounds uh, a lot, yeah, Super Mario is innocent when you watch it as an uh, adult. But it's free for children, even for very small children, and maybe appealing to them. And yeah, it, it caused that incident <laughs> at the playground. Anything, anything causes an incident at the playground, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Um, I, I think that uh, maybe this isn't really a problem about games, but it's more about problems about uh, like the, the tutors, the people who are watching over the children. So in the end, uh, when, you, when you make a game, you have your target audience. So you know uh, who are you going to target and who you want to make the game for. And uh, yeah, some games might seem innocent, like Super Mario, yeah, it's quite a harmless game. And at the same time, uh, you, you know that uh, if small children play this game, they might have different ex ex expectations in real life than, than we do, because we are adults, so we know like how things work. But I think that the, this problem should be uh, on the parents or, or on the tutors, uh, on teachers, and not really on the game itself, because the game can teach children, uh, like the game can teach children things but at the same time, uh, we can't really leave children uh, unattended to, and uh, expect them to learn how life works just by playing a game, because um, games not really life. So do you really think that before you create an open source game, while staying open source world, you really think about the target audience? Well, or do you just want to create a game often, which is fun for yourself? Well, uh, personally, for, uh, but myself, I, I, I make a game for myself, mm -hmm. I, that, that's being honest. But at the same time, being open source doesn't mean that you cannot have an audience. Because you know, when you make a game, you, you have like topics, you have subjects, uh, you have play, play styles in your game, and even if it's open source, it doesn't matter. Because, uh, yeah, it means uh, anybody can, 
uh, hat with it and can play, can modify it, but uh, still you, you have, a, you have a, 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 an idea about the people who are going to play your game. At least you should have, even if it's open source, it doesn't matter, I think. The question mm -hmm. is just how you can make sure that all developers agree on a similar target audience and level of content, so to say. Well, I, I, I'd say uh, you could have guidelines about what you want to have in your own project, and if somebody doesn't agree, then they can fork it on. They can. I mean, it's open source, so you can do whatever you want, right? Technically. Yeah. So, in in Westnot, we have no core, so there's no blood. It's a war game, but without blood. And this is maybe a good idea on the one side, but um, presenting. War too clean might be a bad idea on the other side. My my grandfather was in World War Two in Russia, and yeah, it wasn't so nice. You have um, commercial games, advertising, military. Hallo. Ah, genau die brauchen wir. Thank you very much. Please. It looks a little bit. <laughs> it looks a bit, little bit more official. <laughs> I see some content on it. Yeah, we have the um, very realistic America's Army first-person shooter, which is indeed very realistic. I have been told so, but it does not present any blood, and um, people just vanish from the battlefield. And um, yeah, this is uh, in, for me. For my opinion, this is crossing a line. I would like to have first-person shooters as much realistic as possible, even with... Very arcade. Pardon? Or very arcade. Or very arcade, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. With a lot of jumping or so. So you really see this is not the real war. But if you want to simulate the real war, simulate, simulate all of it, please. Well, no, but yeah, I disagree. You disagree? Fine, yeah. yeah. For example, if you play GTA for 10 hours and then you go driving, you have this moment when you think, oh, if I run these guys over, I get some bonus points. <laughs> yeah, really, really? You, 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 you get... Then you have this uh, blurring of the line between game and reality. So I think if you do a perfectly realistic war game, then, I don't know, it could affect you psychologically. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, but I think you still have to have the separation where in yourself you can you can say, okay, now I stop playing, now I'm in the real world. I was going to say, I think games are going to get ever more immersive anyway. Uh, and, you know, imagine a game where it was... Sorry, you know, please, please talk louder. I was going to say, sorry, I was shouting already. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I think games are only going to get more immersive. And uh, I think, you know, imagine a scenario where we do have a game that's exactly like life where you, if you die, you die, that's it. Not literally, not physically, but you can no longer play the game. Yeah. You know, what would it do on a social level if we were all playing a game, but you could, you know, what, what's the competition? What's the, where, where are you going with the game? That, I think that, that kind of things present uh, an opportunity here for us to have like an ethical framework, be it in open source gaming or commercial gaming, where, where there is an understanding of where that level of immersiveness is and what it means to the player. Mm -hmm. so, so your point is um, complete realism is just not possible or boring? It's not, it's, it's not viable, is it? I don't think. I mean, oh? That's the point. In fact, in, I, I totally agree with that. But there is uh, three points in here that we are discussing. First of all, one point is that the video game is, is, is an art. And, uh, and uh, as any art can be positive, negative, so it's a tendency. So when you see a movie in a cinema, it can be a good movie, bad movie, it can reflect the reality or not. Maybe you see, I don't know, people of Arnold uh, movies of Arnold Schwarzenegger that are really funny, blah, and there is no blood, or uh, the A-team, and uh, okay, it's fine for kids, there is no blood, but it's not the reality. And if you realize what they are doing, it's just really, really crazy. The second factor is when you play a video game, it's, it's something kind of addictive, kind of dependent on the person, of course. And if you get so immersed, you tend to, to fade the real life 
for example, I, I discover myself playing Assassin's Creed and, and, and a lot, and of course I, I like to travel, so when I, when I go to watch a monument, I say, oh my god, I just climbed this monument <laughs> in the Assassin's Creed, and, and, and you, you feel like, ah oh yeah, I'm going to climb it, no, of course not, but 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 you feel like the impulse, and, and, and you get scared about yourself, because you, 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 your brain has faded in such a way, a little bit, the barriers in, between reality mm -hmm. and fiction. And there is a and there is another factor the the challenge the challenge is uh, when you play a video game you you need a challenge and it's in, and it's a game it's something for fun if you try to make it realistic as he says if you die and uh, you don't play anymore okay it's fine it's a lesson it's uh, okay but but it's it, it's not a game anymore it's it's something different mm -hmm. so more, more of a simulation uh, then exactly mm -hmm. so and and the games are getting more and more immersive so finally. Just to finish, uh, you have the, those Googles that uh, are, I, I don't remember the name right now, but uh, I really think the, 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 the sensation and the feelings are going to be really, really immersive. And I think it's going to be a little bit dangerous for some, not all the people, not the mass media, you know, but probably some weak people that doesn't make the difference so clear in between reality and, and fiction. And that's kind of dangerous, I think. Um, maybe um, I like to add, You, you talked about movies and yeah. commercial games, but um, every movie or commercial game is rated by some organization in most countries in the world. But that's not true for open source games. I have not seen an open source game rated. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tyler. I just have to interject that games are not about fun only. Fun is one thing that games can be about, such as film can be about fun, but there can be a lot more also that is not pure fun enjoyment it can be other kinds of enjoyment as well I would just like to highlight this fact like? like uh, uh, well there have been experiments currently games are mostly concentrated on the fun part but for example there have been experiments like the arrestor and and these kind of or or these kind of uh, um, scary games that that are are not <laughs> Amnesia, Dark Descent, for example, which is not very fun in itself. But no, it is fun. Yeah, it is yeah. fun. Yeah, I know. I know it is fun. But anyway, the uh, so well, dramatic movies are fun as well, but it's not fun in the same respect. It's a history. Yeah. It's yeah. But there is a message in between, in the background. That's There's always a message. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. Uh, you see, you're talking about, you're talking about commercial uh, video games, commercial uh, movies in general, but you also have this uh, huge uh, field of uh, independent movies that aren't guided by uh, ethic committees or whatever, they can do whatever nasty stuff they want but, uh, without being afraid of not getting published. Or, uh, so, just want to point it out. Mm -hmm. Even if there is a rating, it doesn't really matter that much. I pay but I was like Yeah, but there are parents who control at least that yeah. eight-year-old child is that's not... That's what it all comes down to, isn't it? I mean, it's like the person said, there will be real people who will be affected, but that's the same with movies, it's the most the mm. same with cash. Yeah, but, but maybe at least the, the adult must have a hint. Yeah, if well, that's what I mean, it, it all depends on the person's home life. I mean, I was not affected, but if I were affected, I would hope that my parents would... See well, you, th you think you are not affected. Well, <laughs> yes, I'm not violent, let's put it <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, with my uh, in, in English. I think maybe you can uh, think about the, the video game is not so different than the outside offline game. When I was young, there wasn't uh, internet, uh, something like this. Maybe we were we was, uh, fighting. In reality, with uh, with uh, clothes from army and uh, force behind and make something like very horrible. Uh, I can uh, make torture with a puppet and I can make, uh, burn my soldier and make very things horrible. And it's it's normal for for yeah. For guy but when you when you this, it's when you punch the other kid on the nose, it's bleeding, isn't it? I mean, Bleeding. Yeah, the blood, blood. Ah, yeah. Yeah? yeah. So, so you have a direct feedback what's possible and what you should avoid. Also, but in, in, in my time, 
it, it wasn't like this. Yeah. And, and when we fall, fall from the, the wall, we, we break the, the, the arm of the neck. I, I think the, the problem we can uh, uh, go to is to, to think about what is what, what's about the, the border of the, the free, human free, to be free, to make a heart and what kind we want with the game. And we, what, we, what is the border with the, uh, the aspect of a uh, bad thing for human being, bad uh, consequence for human being. And I think in this aspect we can see, okay, there is addiction, it's not so good, not so bad, but it's, it's free if you are addict. But if it's addiction for, for something that we have to pay, this is not so uh, ethical. That's a good point, yeah. Like Blizzard. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, like Blizzard, <laughs> maybe. Um, if, 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 the, if the thing are um, creating a new uh, ideology uh, against other people, it's also a bad thing. Like, uh, you know, um, against uh, black people or against women, women or something like that. And so I think it's uh, the, the role of ethical in, inside the virtual world, who is not really virtual because the place is virtual, but the user are not virtual. They are, they are real. They are, uh, it, it, the, the, the rules are the, are, are the same for, for both in, in online and offline. And I think we can get inspiration about what's, what's happening of, 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 offline, about money, about uh, American data, and, 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 and what, what about the, the marketing, about politics, and about uh, everything like this can be transferred inside the, uh, inside the, the net. For example, Second Life is a perfectly an example of the virtual world where, <coughs> where we will be uh, integrate the, the money of Second Life money. But it's a real money then you can change with the real of offline. So you, you, you are the, the bet for me, in my opinion, bet the, the money who, 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 who gets the human being like a slave of money to life. So, uh, so you're inside. The so your your line that yeah. that has not to be crossed is commercial stuff and spending real life money. Yeah, I think real life and or I I prefer to say uh, offline and inline uh, world is not so different, and the ethical has to be the same. Ah, yeah. okay. Hmm? Dan, Dan. Okay. You go first. You go first. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, I wanted to add something. Uh, when you said that in, in real life, if you, if you punch uh, somebody in the face, uh, uh, it starts bleeding, so you know that there is a difference. But uh, also, uh, like uh, when well, when we were young, for example, and we didn't play video games or uh, we didn't have internet or whatever, then we, we would also play, for example, with dolls or, or other puppets. And uh, if if I would like take my sister's dolls and broke them and tear them up and whatever, oh, and, I did that. And then, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I I I would say that. Uh, I would know the difference between a, a doll and a, a human. So there, there is ethics that you can apply both in a playing uh, offline, so playing in real life, and also playing in games. And I don't think that we really need to go uh, too much into realism and say, yeah, games should be uh, like realistic because you need to uh, teach people that doing bad things in video games. Like, they should know the difference. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so. Is it ethical to use mobile phones during talks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'll always do You will have Yeah. I think about, about connecting money with games, I think. There are a couple of aspects. One is the fact that okay, one is the fact that if uh, sorry addictive. Yeah, exactly addictive. One is the fact that if you if you exactly if you hook the hook the money getting thing exactly into the thing that causes addiction. Uh, for example, instead of a monthly fee, you actually get money from the addiction itself, not not monthly from the players, but from the players that get addicted. They have to pay more because they want more. And then you give them more stuff that you can. This is this is very ethically questionable. If I 
if I'm concerned <laughs> about it, but of course there is a huge pay to play culture that actually accepts this as an ethical this issue. What? This is how it goes now, this is all. I have all uh, bad I have, like, Not all. Are based on this no, now. don't say uh, all. Yeah. <laughs> yes. See, this and, is and, but, you but, get the but free the game and you have to pay in game. Yeah, and but, but the pay. thing is that you can do it. Do you, uh, but the thing is a degree. It's not in, it's in itself bad. If you connect it directly to the addiction elements, then it's. Then it of course goes goes very bad. But if you if you still allow parts, meaningful parts that don't lead to costing money, then and then you provide an alternative for, for people that uh, that want to that are addicted to the game but don't, don't want to spend the money. Not every people do this. Uh, anyway, the other aspect about connecting money, um, I think, is that um, for example, if you if you um, pay for a, how do I say it? Uh, well, I'll come back to it later after <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. that's my thoughts a bit. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, you mentioned that uh, games are art, and I believe art is more like uh, expression and uh, some perception. So you make expression and uh, people have a, a perception. Mm -hmm. But when, I believe when you put some guidelines, you avoid people to have their own perception. Maybe yeah, art shouldn't uh, be censored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I believe uh, the thing about the games uh, is that we have some more interaction with the art. So uh, you can do something. You can do something that uh, in that expression of that person. So uh, as you mentioned, it's the McDonald's game. So I believe it has more to do uh, with the per per person perception. So uh, I can perception that. Uh, I can perceive that as like that, that kind of business is wrong. Not that the structure. Uh, is meant as meant to, to be like ah you become richer you do bad things but maybe this the thing is, is bad that's why it works that way it, I believe it depends on the on the, the, the folks that are playing and also uh, that's something about art so I, I'm not sure if a guideline would be good because you avoid people to have their own perception about that and since it's a perception it's something indeed uh, in, in bad in the person so it, it's not in fact, your fault is a, a, something that uh, was there before. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, sorry, I, I want to say something myself again. <laughs> um, I've asked about PGP ratings that we usually don't have at open source product or anything independent. Of course, you are right. <coughs> there must be a freedom of art, but I think it should be signed somehow. Yeah, you introduce stuff that might affect younger people so put a sign in front of it yeah, yeah. and we usually don't do that Westnot has no does Westnot have any no. written warnings about killing elves <laughs> <laughs> no we have no warnings about murdering elves but we have one campaign in which we explicitly say this is not targeted for the younger guys UTBS. Ah, really? Yeah. We explicitly say this is different, it's not the clean mainline domain and... I, I thought it was more about game mechanics and not... Also, yeah. Oh. But I think it was also about the maturity level. <laughs> okay. Pretty sure. I think it's rather difficult to put a specific age requirement for a game. Uh, so... What well, you well, put for, for a movie as well, or? Isn't yeah, yeah, that's the same. Um, I, I think you should put some labels in it, for example, in this game uh, you can see blood, you kill people, uh, I don't know, whatever. But um, I, I think the people have to decide for themselves. <coughs> and and, and uh, that is, uh, it's pretty uh, much different from, from culture and country to country. Exactly. Yeah. So you don't need to put an exact age number on it, but you can mention nudity or gore or whatever. Maybe racism. Yeah. I would say about causes why games can be harmless to people. I think that it's not the game which makes the person violent. It's this insights. It's a big problem. It's about parenting and educational system. Pardon me. A little bit louder, please. It's about parenting and educational system. 
it's uh, not about that this game, for example, GTA 5, if a man plays it for 16 hours, then he goes out to the street and uh, runs <laughs> over the pedestrians. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, about the person who he is and uh, how. So the game is just uh, presses some buttons inside his mind, maybe, and if he has that red button, <laughs> which is yeah, but okay. many crimes okay. nowadays only involve pressing buttons. Uh, well, so <laughs> I want to say that uh, in the medieval ages, for example, I'm sure that on the playground, uh, a small boy could hurt a small girl because and his parents asked him, why did you do that? He would say, oh, you know, the church, they said that we must kill the witches. And the witch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and that's... Uh, Games are not the main cause. It's a sign of person. You wanted to say the same? Exactly. In fact, uh, the, the GTA, well, another game from Rockstar that follows almost the same line is uh, Red Dead Redemption. And uh, it's so funny if you look at the videos in the internet and YouTube about the possibilities that the game gives <coughs> to you. So I, I was just mentioning a, a story that happens to me. So you, you find a um, a woman in the desert and something like that. The, the rock star shows her like really stupid and thing. so you don't like it. And I, I was speaking about a friend. What did you do in that situation? And I said, well, she doesn't want. She didn't want to come to, with me to the city, so I left her there. Okay, it's fine. But he said, no, I, I just. My friend said, I grabbed the, the, the woman and put in the horse. I look at the uh, rail station, I put her in, in the rail station and I just went, uh, was uh, um, waiting for the train to pass and I have some, I have some, some laugh about it. So, but it's, it's a ridiculous situation so, because you don't go, going to do that in real life. So it, it was really, oh, and, yeah. and in the internet there is full of, of possibilities, stupid possibilities that if you analyze that like, like a normal person you would say, oh my god, this is, this is, this is madness. And this is really sadistic and really bad, but it's funny because it's just like black humor. So in mm -hmm. the end, you know, what is the difference in between good, evil, or the reality turns <coughs> out or not? So you are not going to kill the people in the street just because you have seen it in GTA. And in GTA, you have lots of possibilities to do it. So it's more inside yourself. Mm -hmm. But um, GTA does punish you if you kill or some yeah, sometimes the police sometimes is behind you <laughs> pardon me depends sometimes it's a bonus <laughs> yeah. ah, really? and you can kill the police guys uh, oh it's remarkable some kind of with the new weapons <laughs> you you um, want you can to kill the police yeah. guys but if you kill too many of them ah, yes. you yeah. will <laughs> have some repercussions <laughs> forcing you to kill more they will run away <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> And eventually, running away gets really, really difficult. <laughs> and killing more of them, you will run out of ammunition. So the fun, the fun is on getting, the, <coughs> so the fun is on getting pursued, and so you run away from them. So it's just like a, Challenge you know, again. when you, you you are a kid and you play in the in the playground to catch people, you know, mm. because you you like to run. So if you run from one policeman, okay, it's not so fun because it's so easy. Okay, you want thousands of policemen so <laughs> going after you, so it's more fun, and of course. To provoke that, you have to kill like, let's say, five, ten policemen. <laughs> yeah, but it's not the, the goal of the game. No, no, it's not the goal. Where in Kamagidon, for example, this is a child. That was the goal. So, <laughs> kill um, you, you want to catch on? You, you, you promise <laughs> bitch? I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a sub-goal in itself, even if it's not written, it could be a goal. Anyway, uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, about the model of the, the evil act being inside the person and not, uh, not uh, in the game. I mean, we've all heard this media crazy, crazy... Well, I'm not going to go into the expletive here, you know, even though I want to use some curse words for those articles that blame gaming on, on the killings <coughs> and, uh, and murders that people are doing, uh, which is, of course, insane and has no basis in reality. And studies have shown that games are not causing anyone to do this. However, having that in mind, and since we are all a game developing community here, and nobody's watching from the internet there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> having said that, it's not 
it, it's a bit simplistic to think that something is inside the person and this just triggers it. The human mind is a complex thing and games are one thing that affects it, even, even if it's really, really, really bad to say it because people automatically associate it with, with these crazy, crazy media articles that have no basis in reality, even though games may still affect it. Uh, As does anything. I, I believe one of the main things uh, on games is that uh, you can test your, the, the limits. Like uh, there is some, some things that you, you wish to do and you cannot do because you're in real life. Hmm? And uh, you, you choose what you want to test because sometimes you like you, you would like to be Mars, you would like to be Venus or other or galaxies. So you try it again. Or the, uh, or, or uh, maybe you would like to. Ah, see what happens if I kick a policeman, and uh, that's that's different kind of limitations you want to test. So more or less, is, uh, what you want to test and uh, what you're looking for uh, to, to to the bond that you want to cross. And the funny thing is, there is no consequences. So of course, if you, if you go in the street and you kick a policeman, you have consequences. If you go in the video game, you want to test because. You know that there will be consequences. Yeah, yeah, you know what happens then. You have the, the, the testing. Oh, I should not do that. I will get to that situation. But if I remember the concept of GTA correctly, you are a criminal in this game. So they call you a criminal and you do. You can? You can? Well, yeah, as always, you can use things to do bad things and good things. Um, no, I don't think you can. There is no way to finish a game without doing, without doing something well, without killing yeah. a lot of people. So, uh, <laughs> in, in my opinion, it's okay when this game say we are the criminal now, and this is bad per definition, mm -hmm. so we do bad things. But there are games where you are the hero and do stuff that is fragwürdig, questionable. For example, in Red Dead Redemption, I don't know if you played the history mode, but in the history mode it was okay, you kill people, but, but the history was a guy that was redemptive himself, so the history was kind of positive, okay? Look at it in such a way you want. And in this case, uh, what they, they do is, like in a movie, if you see like movies like Heat or movies of gangsters or things like that, they try to to establish a, a link in between the, 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 the user and the, the main character in such a way that, okay, they are criminals, they are bad people, but they, they, they try to empathize, they, they, they try to look the, 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 the empathy. So there is different, for, in GTA, for example, there is uh, in GTA Sorry, five, your point is the characters in GTA have a, a certain depth. Yeah, so indeed. you can understand why they do stuff. Exactly, and, mm -hmm. exactly. So for example, in GTA 4, the main character, you start like a, I don't know, it's what kind of, you don't, aim, in my case, for example, I didn't empathize uh, at all with the character. And once, once I finish the game, I must recognize that I, you feel like some kind of empathy saying, okay, he did all this, but yeah. that's some kind of his reasons. You know? Maybe like Breaking Bad, uh, is one exactly, of Exactly, that's mm -hmm. the same feeling. So, uh, for example, in GTA 5, they show you three main characters, and those three have different personalities. So the people, they try to make the people empathize more with one, with the other, one of, I, I don't know, it depends of, of the story, it's quite complex. But of course, in the video games in general, what they try to push is the same feelings in the movies. You try to identify the user with the character, even if it's evil, good, bad, they don't mind. Because in fact, what you want is to feel something and to have an experience. So if it's good or not, and if it's ethical or not, depends mainly of the director of the script. Because it has the same responsibility, like it's not, it's not all the responsibility in the creator. It's, there is many people involved. So you have graphics that does the, the thing, you have programmers. But mainly it's the concept art and the, the script director that are going to have the ethical responsibility on the game. That's what I think. Do you really think that people feel like Rocky when they play Donkey Kong? No. No, but, but, but that, that's different because in the video games of the 80s was more like you move this piece, it, it, it fits in here, it's more like Tetris, so the character doesn't matter. You don't associate reality with that, it's more like a puzzle, you know? Sorry.
Like Can we hear this, guys? I think it's very good uh, for games to to show a different rules of, of reality, or 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 or, 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 or to you doing a game you can live experience that you will not live in the real world. This this is uh, this opens your mind. I I think uh, we should promote that uh, the games uh, make this uh, difference explicit. Um, yeah, yeah. Asha, well, Asha has his opinion. When you write a game, you, you should think of uh, what what are these uh, rules and what is the, the what are the difference of the with the real world. And I think it it it, it, would, it would be very good if uh, games and open source games uh, might make it easier that you, you uh, they have uh, modules uh, parts with. Uh, I, 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 If you make a module of, of, of a game that behaves the, uh, like the real world, for example, you, you can write a game uh, of war uh, without blood and without permanent death, but you, you can write a mode that if you play it, it uh, when you die, you are, you are dead and with, with a lot of, of blood. This model uh, probably would be less fun to play. But, <coughs> but it should uh, be available to... But it uh, would be yeah. very interesting for people to, to know, to make very explicit... Uh, Something like a card mode and not a card yes. mode. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ganz da hinten. Uh, I, I'm just thinking, though, I think there's a gap here. Like, I don't know if exists. Louder, louder. Yeah, indeed. An organization that looks forward, look, looks at the science, look at the psychology, the academia behind how the mind is affected by games and, uh, in, and in society and stuff. And I think it'd be good if we had that applied to games. There was a study a couple of years ago that showed that gamers had faster reaction times than. Yeah, it truly really affects you. Uh, I remember when I um, played Quake 1, it's uh, quite a while, I dreamed at night <laughs> from being in Quake levels with, with other friends I know and everyone had no weapon. Yeah, We were completely weaponless so we had to trick the monsters and many of us died and every time I died <coughs> I waked up <laughs> totally wet from sweat Uh, oh, it, it was a dream. Then I uh, um, felt asleep again and I reincarnated at the same. <laughs> so it took the whole night and it, it was fun because I realized at some point, ah, it's a game. <laughs> Gesundheit. Um, yeah, it, it must have affected me. <laughs> What can I tell about the dreams? Uh, yeah, I had this. Uh, somebody uh, on the TV tried to uh, tie uh, the fact that somebody gets uh, s uh, dreams about the levels of games uh, yeah, and about uh, walk through with them in the sleep uh, to the actual uh, the rise of uh, addicting to the games and the rise of vi violence in, uh, in among the gamers. But normally, when you're sober or even drunk, sometimes you have uh, dreams even more you know, green <coughs> and uh, crazy than just level of quake. So, uh, or or fever. Yeah, My so fever dreams so are The fever dreams are even more horrible. And normally, uh, just uh, any person having the bad dream, uh, not going crazy and killing everybody. Mm -hmm. Good point. Dreams are our way of uh, uh, simulating reality and different outcomes and so on. So they are. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm not sure, but that's one of one of the things that mm -hmm. they are thinking about that might be dreams. They could be. That's um, I earlier had a concept that I, I was having trouble formulating. Can I introduce? Yeah, I remember. The, this is a different question altogether. It's a about money and games, because as a game developer, um, people people like uh, like developing games because they like games. 
So when you introduce money as one aspect of the game, the question is uh, whether whether you actually are breaking the game itself, because games happen in this well, <laughs> sort of happen in this so-called magic circle, which uh, which. Uh, which is defined as things that happen in the game uh, affect the game world itself, and things that from outside don't affect the game world, things from inside don't affect the outside. Well, it, of course, it doesn't work completely like that, and there are games that explicitly try to break this. Uh, they do it in a specific way. The so magic yes, example, like and I can, I can wait for ten minutes, or then I can build it right now if I have the money, or then I can attack uh, other person's castle with uh, twenty percent more efficiency if I pay now. So then you are actually, you are actually uh, breaking the game, because why we love games is probably because they. They offer this different kind of uh, world where things interact in a different ways. So you are injecting money into that. So my question is, do we have an ethical responsibility as game de developers to actually keep games as games? Well, there is a point in that. For example, if you... Okay, the, the sample that, that you gave was quite neat and okay, in, in this case, well, you... You have the choice, so I don't see many major issues on ethics. If you, you have the choice on paying or wait, okay, it's fine. The problem is when, uh, for example, uh, I go back to the sample of Blizzard and World of Warcraft, for example, if um, when you pay the quote, the monthly fee of, I don't know, it was 12, 12 euros when I was playing, okay, you. You play and they have methods that I don't think they are ethical at all. For example, I played like that was eight months and uh, I decided to do not play anymore because I was seeing that the game was repeating itself once and again, so I, I, I got tired of the game and I simply decided to do not play anymore. And I don't pay them my next week. And I received an email really, really, really to me really nasty that convinced me to do not play anymore ever, ever in my life. It was like, we remarked that uh, you don't play World of Warcraft, uh, we are so sorry to... to Th that was from Blizzard? That. It was from Blizzard. And he says, uh, and they said, well, if, if you feel that you're not playing anymore because you don't have time, we have special groups for you, so you can, uh, you can keep playing but with special people that will uh, will allow you to keep playing without spending so much time and doing special missions. And I realized that I, I, I was like like in a sect or it, like it was a group like you know that mm -hmm. in my mind. And I and I felt really really bad. So I said no no no. I, I don't want to speak with those guys at all anymore in my life. And, uh, and and I, I don't think that that's ethical at all. So if you have the choice of paying or not, it's fine. But there is a counterpart on, on this. Okay, you say, okay, I'm, I don't want to pay World of Warcraft, but I want to keep playing World of Warcraft. Okay, there is pirate servers all over there, so you can connect without paying and blah, 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 which is okay, illegal, but you can do it. The thing is, uh, people that I know that played in the pirate servers always was complaining because there was hacks and there was nobody uh, trying to care about that. So there was lots of cheaters and you are playing a game and what is cool on playing a game is there is rules that you have to accomplish and, one, and, and, and everybody feels, uh, uh, follows that rules. So that means that if I'm better than you, I can win you. But of course, if you cheat, you will win me even if, if you are worse than me. So. There is no point on playing that. So basically, when you pay the quote on World of Warcraft, you are paying the right on playing the right rules of the game. Only that. Yeah, the right. rest is, well, the rest of the hooking you and trying to you to pay, to me it's completely illegal and should be in such a way punished. Maybe this is partly off topic, but I quitted um, <coughs> World of Warcraft because I had a stalker who wanted to marry me. 
and there was no um, way to get rid of him. You could, you can um, silence characters, but not players. So every time I met a, a new nice person in this game, I thought, oh no, it might be him again. <laughs> Yeah, and this was completely uh, stressing me. Yeah, it, I, 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 c I can imagine a stalker in real life is one of the evilest things but ever. The, the people like, like Blizzard should, should uh, well, they know, of course, but, uh, but they shouldn't have responsibility. So they, they should understand that, okay, they made it such a big game that hooks the people in such a way I, that. I, I, I had the, the chance to to um, yeah, point at him and then his um, account was closed but he just bite another one under another name and uh, started again, yeah? It was completely... Uh, I had no chance to get rid of him w w without leaving my character, yeah, 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 of course yeah. without disguising, yeah? One thing, okay, like I think the monetizing and the gambling kind of Please talk a bit, a little bit louder. I can't hear you. Them putting ethically questionable characters as a lead character in a movie. You can still have a PG movie that's got an ethically horrible lead, oftentimes they are, horrible character with bad ethics themselves. But the movie is PG because there's no violence. But ethically, it's not, the, the standard body doesn't care about ethics, it's not about them. So I think for games, the most important questions are whether a little kid sees something realistic violence. It's more these, more these uh, trickier ethical questions like how we, how we hook people. Which you can't, you can't have a rating. You can't say, this game is rated okay for not hooking you and taking my money. Well, it's much harder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. R rating is a difficult question. Yeah, but also mm -hmm. I think with rating there's this, also this other layer where Usually, the kids are more tech savvy than their parents. So when the parents think they're in control, there's always a way to. I mean, if I know a game is when I'm 13 years old, like, oh, this is a mature game that I'm not allowed to play. That's yeah, the but, first but thing I'm gonna do maybe when go to bed. maybe alone the fact that I'm not allowed to play the game teaches a child that uh, there's something wrong with the game and. Yeah, but it still doesn't, especially with, if, you're, if you're talking about open source games, distribution is really easy. I can get it legally perfect. Yeah, I think it, there's this extra level of complexity involved. It, so it's not only about putting a label on it, it's also about maybe distribution or like publishing the games. So, yeah. <coughs> yeah, you can't enforce that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Not for commercial stuff and it, erst recht nicht. Um, Especially not with um, open source stuff. Yeah. Maybe you can um, see the, the problem about uh, accessibility. There is not a problem from a programmer and a company, but more problem of uh, social context of the child and the uh, rule of the parents. Because with internet now, uh, kids uh, have the possibility to access to a lot of things, pornography, uh, bad movie, bad games, and everything like this, including uh, uh, pedophile uh, uh, net who are uh, mm -hmm. on, on the net. And this is uh, really, this is a danger for, for, for the, the kids. But this is also uh, something uh, near the, the game ethic problem. It's 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 uh, about all the net system, all the this new uh, media age of yeah. everything uh, accessible, and this is for me it's uh, it's uh, a debate uh, more large uh, about the, the ethical, in not about uh, game but about uh, uh, internet uh, access. And for me, it's incredible why. Uh, Sorry, uh, do, do you have children already? Yes, I do. 
But the two of two of you are all. Yeah, so it's not a question right now. The computer with a text pane and something like this is very good. I like it. But it's not too much. It's very good. And maybe you know more than this model already. But uh, what I, I want to I, I want to tell about is uh, if I'm being near to the target. No problem. Uh, I would like to add that I think uh, there's, I mean, obviously we are talking about the impact on children. Maybe well, not only, not only, but. But I think uh, there's, a, there's a transition going on in the current generation growing up with games and media uh, because we obviously uh, have much more understanding of the technical and uh, because of the. Yeah, in the development in the last 20 years of dancing, uh, our parents didn't really understand about these 3D games, they didn't know it, but we uh, have much more possibilities to control this for our <coughs> So you yeah. see the problem is not as worse as it was in the past, yeah, Re regarding children. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I would agree. Mm. Mm. Wen hatten wir denn noch nicht? <lacht> da! <lacht> um, but honestly, talking about ethical questions, it's, I think, not just that we should talk about how can we save our kids. I think a very important ethical question is the reuse of content. Um, in Westland, we see it pretty often that people just upload content to the add-on server, which they borrowed from some sites in the internet where they don't have the right to do so. So I think that's a pretty important ethical question of how should this be handled? How should it be handled? Where the users get their content from, which they then upload in but, but, just again. But this and the step further is, where do the game projects get their content from? And how can they make sure that it's all legal and all rights and whatever is respected? Mm, yeah, but this is somehow um, controlled by government and laws. Yeah, I guess if we allowed um, uploading um, copyrighted content without any restrictions, we would um, be closed down some sometime soon. <laughs> yeah. It's the question. Uh, shall we, we try? Really be down? Shall we try it? <laughs> Is it possible to be really closed down as an open source project? I think as a company, you're not legally. I mean, if you allow people to really upload stuff to your website. I think the only thing you're legally required to do is that if you get an official document saying please remove this, I own it, then you have to remove it. But it's not really your responsibility what people are uploading. Not that yeah. sense. So, uh, we also uh, demand that uh, you license it, license it under GPLv2 or, late, or later. And everyone else on the server also assumes that. So. Well, yeah, you realize that it's it without the permission. It's to other, to other add-ons and eventually mm. might end up in our repository. And yeah. Hmm? Maybe we hear. Okay. Yeah, I would say two things. First, uh, to the guy who said uh, about uh, uh, we are in the generation of people who grew up with video games, so it's easier for us to handle uh, video games for our children. I, I, I don't quite agree because now, again, uh, nowadays, are very very different. Uh, at least for myself, uh, I, don't, I I don't use Facebook. I don't play flash games. I I, I don't play games on my smartphone. So uh, I I'm not used to uh, games that monetize time. So I know that there are games like Farmville. So where where you have to pay to actually uh, access more content. So it's limited on time, and you have, you have to pay money or or like uh, invite people from other uh, like from from Facebook, from Twitter, or something to get more content. So I, I, I'm not familiar with those, those type, type, type of games because I, I grew up with different games. So saying that uh, society is moving towards a more uh, acceptable community uh, of people who, who of, uh, adults who uh, agree with games and they know games, I, I don't think it's quite true because at, at the moment we are evolving really fast in the game, uh, like in the game industry uh, on different technologies. So uh, it's not really immediate to say that we are all uh, aware of how games work. Even though we grew up with games, we can't really assume that 
we know uh, what our children are doing with, uh, while playing games on their on their iPad mm -hmm. or something. But at least I feel tech savvy enough yeah, yeah, to lock down the, yeah, the uh, machine at, of at mine. the moment. Yeah, but uh, uh, how, like in 20 years, uh, how, how do you know it? Then we we will know uh, about the technology in the future. I mean. It's uh, it's changing so fast. For example, like uh, we have uh, other dangers because now uh, uh, I, I would assume that uh, if if a, if a child starts playing Farmville or, or whatever other uh, such a game, uh, 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 there are some tricks they can uh, maybe perform to get more content. So they can invite people, they connect with uh, strangers. So there are dangers uh, that maybe uh, at my my age when I used to play games when I, when I was younger, I, I didn't have those problems because. There were mostly offline games and even online games that were uh, with uh, interaction with actual people. But uh, uh, nowadays, you can actually connect with uh, with bots, with uh, uh, illegal uh, accounts on Facebook or, or something like this, and meet strangers, uh, dangerous people who you, you, you can't really control. Mm. At least it's not so immediate. To, to Maybe that's, that's a little bit paranoid because no, most, yeah, I, most, I mean, most child abusing is taking place uh, in the near relatives, well, well, yeah? It, it 98% percent of, of all child abusing is um, it, the yeah, uncle yeah, or the aunt. Yeah. I, I the problem is not really about child abuse, but it's also, also about leaking personal data. Yeah, yeah. We are, mm -hmm. are connected with, with, with strangers, and we didn't have that problem 10 years ago, but now we are leaking data everywhere. So uh, it's, uh, it, it's also a problem, I, I, I would assume. And besides, we don't even know what kind of games will be developed. When we are also when we are when when our children are grown up, yeah. so so I don't know what kind of concepts they play with. Maybe they play with their social network, for example, connecting with different people means different things and so on. Games are going in different directions, so we can't really assume that we know. However, uh, there has been a increase in. What we do know is that things are played, but our parents perhaps didn't know uh, how to handle play things in general. So that is a concept that can be applied, even even if the games themselves change. I think. Maybe my time is. I think your time is basically over. Oh, that's uh, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs>